I'm an accelerator physicist and nuclear physicist. I work at CERN, Geneva in Switzerland. It well happens to me during different time, very often when I'm on a party, dinner, on a social event, that I have to explain what I do for a living. Yes, I also work with the biggest accelerator in the world. This is the Large Hadron Collider. This is the biggest machine ever built in the human history. It is 27 kilometers long. It's almost nine kilometers in diameter. It is inside an underground tunnel that is up to 150 meters deep. It's like the last floor of Palace of Culture in front of us. It collides particles, protons and nuclei to be exact, with the highest energy we can achieve. Energy of a single proton in LHC has an energy of a flying mosquito of one kilometer per hour. However, to maximize chance to observe very, very, very rare phenomena, we need to maximize the collision rate. And for this reason, we put into LHC as many protons as we can. There are 400 million million. They all together, they have an energy of a 200 meter train going with over 150 kilometers per hour. On top of that, again, to maximize chance of the maximize rate of collisions, we squeeze this beam to minimum size. It is well below one millimeter. And such an energy with such a small space clearly has a destructive power. So to verify our simulations, we made an experiment. We sent the beam from the second biggest accelerator at CERN, which was 1,000 times less intense and 10 times thicker, and it made in a copper block more than 20 centimeter hole. You can imagine what the LHC beam can do. In order to keep this so high energy beam inside the 27 kilometer ring, we must have extremely high magnetic force. And to generate this force, we have special superconducting magnets. These magnets generate such a force on their cores. This is 400 tons over one meter. So one meter of a magnet can lift a jumbo jet, which is full and ready to start. Superconducting magnets, in order to work, they must be, they work in a very, very low temperatures. The LHC magnets, they work at minus 271 degrees Celsius, which is just 1.9 degree over the absolute zero. It is one degree less than the outer space. And we need to keep this temperature all around 27 kilometers, basically. So it makes the LHC as the biggest cryogenic installation in the world. We also need almost perfect vacuum in LHC first, so the protons don't collide with the air. Second, to insulate the minus 271 degrees. This is the emptiest place in the solar system. The energy of all magnets in LHC is energy of a nuclear aircraft carrier going with the full speed 50 kilometers per hour. And in time, and around four points where the protons collide, we have four giant detectors. They are our digital cameras. They are packed densely with sensors and electronics. And <coughs> to see the scale, see the silhouettes of people, these detectors are like six floor buildings. And these are the tapes of with the data and the robot that services them. The four, the, the, the LHC experiments, they call it per year data equal to five millions of DVDs. In terms of high definition movie, 2.3 thousand years of watching. And also in scale of time, this is more than one generation project. It was first thought of beginning of 80s, I was five years old. And it was approved for construction in 1994, I was towards the end of my high school. It was started in 2001. I just came at CERN to start my PhD. And it was finished 2008. I was already an adult physicist. And it will continue for 20 years or even more. And then I will be over 50 towards the end of my career. And it might happen that people who continue our work, they are not born yet. So when I talk all about it with sparks in my eyes, face of haunted men, the people are 
listening with a real fascination sometimes. They're nodding that they understand, but they are showing that it's not really the case. And then they face get sharper, and they blast one of those questions. So what are you doing there at the end? Or is there any better way to spend this money? Or is there anything sensible that we have from all this? Well, what do you think? Do you remember World Without Internet and World Wide Web? World Wide Web, the omnipotent now, it's technology that was created alongside the experiment at CERN. It was created in 1990 to facilitate the exchange of information and documentation between CERN and the collaborating institutes. Internet, of course, existed since the 70s. The computers could talk to each other. However, the idea to have a special application called Web Browser to open a document on a server and then to use a link to open another document on another computer was created at CERN 23 years ago. Another big thing is the proton therapy. Proton therapy removes tumors by shooting them with protons or with carbon ions. It should be hadron therapy, that's why it's the two. And it's in many cases a much better way than scalper or currently commonly used radiotherapy. And why it's much more better? Because proton, it does the most of damage only when it stops. It does very little harm, relatively little harm to the tissue that it passes through and it does no harm to the organs behind, which is not the case for radiotherapy. And there is an opinion that the oncologists would abandon completely the radiotherapy if they had easy access to hadron therapy centers. However, there are only 30 around, because, and they are mostly around the, uh, with the, associated with the physics labs. And this is because this technology is big, still big and complicated and expensive. And now we are exactly at the stage where we try to industrialize it. And the Accent put a lot of effort in order to bring this technology from the big accelerators like LHC or the, 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 the older ones, in order to transfer it to the medical uh, accelerators so they are smaller and hence cheaper, more effective, and more accessible to people. Another important impact where CERN had uh, contributed importantly is position, uh, position emission tomography. PET currently is a common technique in cancer diagnostic that is available basically in every oncology hospital. Also, the detectors technologies, they find immediately their ways to medical imaging, to protein crystallography, to, the, to, to other fields. Here is an example of a detector derived from one of the LHC detectors that is used for very high precision, very high resolution X-ray and computer tomography. And additionally to this, those detectors are able to perform at the same time, simultaneously, computer tomography and PET. The other detectors from another experiment, they are used to do uh, simultaneous magnetic resonance and PET. So one of them is showing the whole body, the other one shows only the tumor, which is very important often for the, for the doctors. Other detectors, they are used by neurologists to study how the eye retina transmits the, the signals to the brain. Hopefully, this, that this, tech, uh, this development, this research, will lead to artificial sight to blind one day. There's another very important application of accelerators, which is associated with synchrotron radiation. Whenever a beam changes direction in an accelerator, it shines, it emits light. And if the beam is energetic, this light becomes an X-ray, very powerful X-ray, which is very useful. Then such an accelerator, it's called synchrotron light source, created specially for this. And if the beam is very, very intense, then laser action starts, and this light becomes a laser, which opens a whole new world of opportunities for different researchers. The, these techniques are used in biology, chemistry, for development of new drugs, and for material science, for example, to develop better and smaller data storage hard disks, and so on. To give you just one example, the XFEL, X-ray free electron laser, is able to make a movie of reacting molecules. You can imagine how much insight you get by this. There are also uh, solar panels that use the vacuum technology from, 
accelerators. The biggest problem to capture the light, the, the, the energy of la, of, uh, from sun, is that most of it immediately escapes to the air. So we need a good insulation, and vacuum is the best insulation. So these solar panels, as you see here, they work, they heat up until, until up to 80 degrees Celsius under 30 centimeters of snow. They already installed in several places, Geneva Airport included. The next technology is the computing grid. I mentioned before that the four detectors, they collect this gargantuan amount of data, and huge computing power is needed in order to analyze it. At CERN, we have more than 5,000 computers on our farm, and still this is way not enough to analyze this, this data. So for that reason, the computing grid was created. It makes a federation of computing centers, so this data can be analyzed in any of the associated computer centers anyway. Any place, Taiwan, you choose. And this technology is already used in any other fields, not only physics, wherever the high computing power is needed. I could go on and go on and go on with examples very long, believe me. The knowledge transfer and the technology transfer is one of the sense missions. Nobody doubts, and it's clear for everybody, that trans returning as much as possible to the society is crucial. That's why we have a special group that facilitates this link uh, in order to make this transition to industry as fast as possible. However, the SEND mission, the basic, the most principal mission of SAN is the basic research. And I do not know what the Higgs will bring to us in 20 years, 100 years, or more. There was a very famous physicist, Michael Faraday, who invented the electric generator. And he was asked by the British minister in 1850, he was asked by the British minister of finance what is the value of electricity? And he said, I don't know yet, but one day, sir, you may tax it. I believe I could show you more to prove the huge urge to acquire knowledge and more examples of technologies that save life, that are used in our daily lives, that were created alongside the experiments. Is the road towards the goal more important, or is it the goal itself you choose for yourself? However, even the biggest machine in the world looks rather like small, comparing to the breakthrough in technology that it brings to us. Leave alone the scientific interest that makes us humans. Thank you very much.